Hey everybody, it's Jesse, and I'm making this video today from a bunk bed. This is my friend Ambrose. And this is Taggy. Oh, and my robot hand. I really love robots. <laughs> All right. uh, this is my son, <laughs> and uh, today uh, I want to talk a little bit about what I did to prepare for my interviews. Uh -huh. So the last two videos on my channel were about... Uh, my Google interview specifically, and then another video of just more in general of my whole experience of interviewing. So uh, I had several questions about what I did to prepare. So I'm going to go over some of the websites I used and books and resources, and I'm going to let you know which ones I think were the most helpful. Um, so just to start out, I interviewed for front-end developer positions, front-end engineer, uh, software engineer positions, so, and, uh, so my, it was more front-end based for me, all of my interviews, interview questions, and my preparation, so depending on whether you're front-end, back-end, or full-stack, and what languages you use, this may be a little bit different, uh, but, one service that I think was really valuable was called Pramp. It's uh, P-R-A-M-P. I'll make sure I put links to everything I talk about in the description. Um, so, Pramp is a service where you sign up and you get paired up with someone else for a time slot. So, I think it was like an hour time slot. In the first half hour, one of you takes the role of the interviewer and the other one is the interviewee and then for the second half of the time slot you switch places uh, so it gives you not only do you have a practice question but you also have a time limit and you have someone else that's asking the question that you have to explain yourself to uh, that was really helpful um, they have it broken down by different categories, so you can just do front-end related stuff and my or robot hand data can structures do and algorithms. It can just blast. Yeah. Whoa. I flew it. <laughs> and, and I love tiger. It, uh, because of that, it stood out as being really unique and, and offering something that uh, some and of the other resources did not So, deep, if you don't have, if you don't have any um, experience, or like a lot of experience and with I actual like interviews, guy balls. okay, let's be quiet. Okay. okay, if you don't have experience with interviews, then I definitely recommend Pramp. Um, I they may have like a free tier. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it is a paid service, but there may be some way to get uh, some free things. I'll find out and, and put more info in the description. Uh, so, the next thing that I used that was uh, very, very helpful was a book called Cracking the Coding Interview. And I know I mentioned this in some of my other videos, and I mentioned it to some of you that, that asked me questions directly. Um, it's a huge book. It has a lot of information in it. It was written by uh, a woman who actually interviewed a lot of people at Google. Um, it, goes, <laughs> it goes through and explains what interviewers are thinking, what they're looking for when they actually uh, interview you. And just being able to get into that, that mindset of what interviewers are, are actually thinking helped me so much. Um, it helps me... It, you know, there's there's so many things you could talk about or focus on when you're in an interview. Uh, so just knowing what what these people want to hear uh, is great. Okay, Darth actually, Vader. Let's be uh, quiet. Actually, I'm a most Thomas Weigel mm -hmm. and my last name's Weigel. That's right. So, and I, know I definitely Tiggy's recommend that last book. Name. There's also Tiggy's last name is Ty. Oh, okay. There's also a, a ton of practice problems and explanations of data structures and algorithms. So, if you are going for a more general software engineer position or a back end position, then 
those practice problems would help you a lot. For me, it wasn't that helpful because most of my questions were uh, specifically front end JavaScript related. Uh, so it was it was still cool to go over some of that info. Uh, don't I don't have a computer science background, so a lot of it was new to me. Uh, so I'm sure it'll be helpful to me at some point, uh, but just wasn't so much for uh, for the interview. So if you're going for front end stuff, then I think it's safe to skip over a lot of those sections of of that book. Uh, the next resource that I used, and and this is probably a little bit more front end specific is uh, Free Code Camp. So Free Code Camp has some practice interview uh, questions, and they also have some kind of less difficult JavaScript algorithm challenges. Uh, so I think that's a great way to refresh your JavaScript knowledge. So if you already have a job um, where you're n not coding that much uh, all the time, uh, you want to get in the habit of, of coding um, as much as you can before you interview. There's shale up on my cheek right here. Mm, you can go wash it off if you want. Fine! <laughs> <laughs> I ate a pancake at Jesus and took it out. So, I, I highly recommend Free Code Camp um, for a variety of things, but in this case, for sure, for your, uh, for your interview uh, prep. And another resource, um, another resource that I used was uh, JavaScript uh, Data Structures and Algorithms book. I'll put the the official title and link to that below. I ended up getting the uh, um, the ebook, so I had that on my phone. So I I got the hard copy of the Cracking the Coding interview, but. When I was in a situation where I, I didn't have my hard copy, you know, but I always had my phone on me, then I, I could always look at, at that. So that helped me because it was JavaScript specific, which is the language that I was being tested in. Uh, so that was, um, it was easier for me to understand the example problems than what I was seeing in Cracking the Coding interview. Uh, it was just another explanation of some of those data structures and algorithms, which, like I said, ended up not helping me that much because I didn't really get uh, questions about it. But if you are going for something that's that's a more full stack uh, position or back end position, you may get asked questions about that. So I uh, highly recommend that as something well. Or... That is back. Yeah. <laughs> You're Hello. back. And I, I'd recommend that for whatever books you're using, uh, I think it would be a good idea to what about you, have an electronic copy of the book. So even if you're, if you like hard copies, that's great. Uh, if you can only find it in a hard copy, that's fine. And, and sometimes, especially when you're looking at code, it's a lot easier to just have a hard copy sometimes. Uh, but having that on my phone was so useful. You know, if I was waiting in line, waiting at the doctor's office, you know, I didn't feel like I was wasting time. I could always look at that uh, and practice. So it just kind of always kept it in my mind. Uh, and I think that's that's really helpful uh, when you're, you just need to be able to always be thinking about code. Uh, it just, it makes it so much easier when you're actually on the spot in the interview. You only have a short amount of time you know, you're probably a little bit nervous. Uh, so I think it's, it's kind of like... This is the like, Master Sword. Yeah, it's the Master Sword from Zelda. Yeah. I mean, not the Master Sword, but, you know, a good replica. Uh, so yeah. It's hard. I think like, like you would approach, uh, let's say, a foreign language, you know, a spoken language... Uh, with more use, you're going to be more comfortable when you actually get into a conversation with somebody. It's the same way with coding. Um, even if you didn't have great resources, but you still coded as, as often as you could. Okay, little squeaky mouse. No, we're squeaking. If you coded as often as you possibly could, uh, that's going to be more useful than if you had great resources, the perfect books, the perfect questions, uh, and you only looked over them, you know, occasionally. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Okay, no more squeaking. Robin, I'm Robin. So, 
Just remember that uh, ab above everything, uh, just practice, practice coding. And then when you actually go on the interview, uh, just be be honest. Okay, you don't have to. You don't have to be down on yourself. You don't have to tell the interview all the things you don't know. But, on the other hand, don't claim that you know things that you don't. Uh, because they'll be able to figure it out really easily, right? If they say, hey, do you know how to you I know, can do a front make a, a network request Look at in me. JavaScript? You say, oh, yeah, I do it all the time. And they say, okay, can you, can you do it for me? You know, write it on the, on the whiteboard. <laughs> Well, then you're stuck, right, if, if you don't really know how to do it. So just be honest. You could say, you know what, hey, I've, I've done it before, but I'm a little rusty on the syntax. I or, turned around you know what, I never actually had to do that. I kind of know how, to, how it's done. Can I just explain it to you? I mean, um... So something like that is, is my, way more acceptable. Um, and if you have um, to just say, listen, I've never heard of that before. Um, my... My, Just say it, um, and you can even add. Is which is mean as house in so, I really like. Hey, can I talk her? now? Yeah. Thank you. So, if you don't know, admit that you don't know. But then it would be helpful to say, "Listen, like if I had to do that for my job, here's where I would go to find the answer." You know, so say I would I would look this up on MDN or something like that, uh, and then at least you would you could give some answer, even if you have no idea. You've at least given some answer uh, and said like, here's how I would approach this this problem. Uh, so I think I'm gonna wrap this video up. Uh, the that was my uh, my advice. Let me know what you think if it's too distracting to have. My, my little friend something. here for the video, or if you kind of like the distraction for me talking. And Tiggy, yeah, Tiggy, say, say something. Say something. Um, I really like toys, and I really like animals, and I, I really am spitty, and, <laughs> and I eat humans, yeah. and I really want yeah, gonna... pancakes and but. And bread and everything in and the I'm whole gonna say, world. Let's say goodbye to everybody on YouTube. Would you like to say goodbye? Bye, bye, bye. That was Saggy. Bye. That was me. All right. And see, now you. See you later, everybody. Hopefully this helped. And um, give me your ideas for what videos <laughs> I should do next. Uh, until next time. Uh, have a great day.